The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 19th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you when I just passed 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question in the Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow, 204 points, 26, 451 is print. Looks like it's headed all the way back up to its all-time high. We'll take a look at that. S&P's up four points, trade out at 2908. NASDAQ 100 down 32. Russell off seven. Semis are basically flat. Trannies are up 37. New York Stock Exchange is up 51 points, and that is an interesting thing. We're certainly going to take a look at that. Gold's up five. Silver's up nine cents. Leading the charge, the upside, 74 bucks, or 47%. <clears throat> Tilray, Inc., uh, then they've got Madrigal Pharmaceuticals up 15, GW Pharma up 13, BlackRock up 12, AutoZone up 12. To the downside, Amazon. Amazon trading out 28 bucks, 1.5%. MetaFast off $19 and change, 8.5%. The Ultimate Software down 3.5 or 11 bucks. Uh, Copart down 16% or $10. There are some things moving and a grooving out there. No questions that have come in. And uh, although earlier this morning inside the Tiger's Den, yes, that's right, Jay, you've got a, uh, you've got a net uh, sloping to the downside advanced decline line. That's good. He put that in there. Let's go take a look at that. What is Jay referring to inside the Tiger's Den? You do not see this pattern happen often. And of course, it's going to be an end of day pattern. Now, and taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange, this is broken down into three panels. Panel number one is price. Now, I just have it on a line chart. And that way, we're only taking a look at closing prices out there. That's the easiest way for me to take a look at this set of tools that you and I are going to take a look at. The center portion is the advanced decline oscillator. What is that? Look, an oscillator is nothing more than the difference between two components. In this case here, the two components are two exponential moving averages. Those being used are 39 and 19 with regard to, in this case here, it's a daily chart, so 39 days and 19. It's taking all advanced decline data and then taking a look at what the difference and plotting that on the chart here. Now, you're going to see the current reading says minus 58.57. So we know that it's below zero. But take a look at this. It does not happen often. Just before the show, I was trying to find a few instances where this happened. And please, don't misconstrue what I'm saying to mean like the market's going to crash. That's not what we're, we're just simply talking about. There's something here that needs to resolve itself. See how we've got price moving higher? But take a look at this advanced decline oscillator. It is moving, making lower highs below the zero line. When the advanced decline oscillator is below zero, what is presumed to be what is presumed to be is that the sellers are in control. I know you say blasphemy. How can that even take place when you have price moving higher? 
Well, this can resolve itself, and it would resolve itself to the downside, meaning some type of retracement, not a crash or something like that. It is so unusual to have price making higher highs with this indicator below zero, as it's been below zero, quite frankly, since the trading day of uh, September 4th out here. Um, so it's, it's unusual. But typically, Jay, if it stays intact like this, it is a signal of an ensuing retracement out there. That's about the best that I can say. Yeah, something wrong with that picture. However, earlier in the day, it did resolve itself. We did have a net positive advancing issues, and so we had a higher high. It's an end-of-day reading. It's 111 in the afternoon, so I don't know what it's going to look like. Hey, let's go out to uh, Denver and speak with Phil. Phil, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Do we have Phil? Hey, I'm, I'm here, Steve. Hey, perfect, perfect. Uh, how are you? How are you today? I'm doing, I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you. Um, hey, tell me how I can. I was help wondering you. if, I was wondering if you could look at a T, AT and T. Yep. And what are what are you doing? Well, I'm looking to uh, see if this thing will retrace down to 3250ish area. I'd like to, uh, there's been some insider buying in this, and um, I would like to pick this up if I could on some kind of a retracement here. So um, if this is going to retrace, first let's take a look at where it's going to find support on any kind of retracement so that you can use that as your gauge. Because certainly today you've got a bearish reversal candle. Um, where is that occurring? Mm. It's occurring near an area where AT&T had recently broke down. When I say recently broke down, I'm coming back to the trading session of June the 13th when this thing had gapped to the downside. I would have expected price to get up to 3408. It didn't do that today. It got up to a high of 3396. Nonetheless, a signal that, okay, maybe it's not ready to bust out through that level of resistance. Support on this is going to be 3326. That is the top of the weekly profile. You're at 3347. You're probably looking for a deeper retracement than that. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I definitely would like to. If I could possibly get it in the 3250, 33 area, would be great. So if that's going to occur, and this is what you get to watch for, you'll need to see a close on a weekly basis below 33.26. Now, that doesn't mean you can't see it occur intraweek, but you want to see a close below that level. If that takes place, then your target probably becomes uh, 32.10 to 32.21, and that's what I would be looking at. So right now, what we don't have is any kind of a signal to say that that is what is going to take place today. Yes, we have a bearish daily candle out here as we speak, but that's not enough evidence for me that it is ready to uh, pull back. But I can't suggest that you chase it high here either. So you're looking for about 32.50. If that's going to happen, you're going to need to see a close below 33.26. Okay, my friend? Hey, thank you, Steve. Hey, if you have a chance, could you look at I took a position in uh, Great Panther today. Yeah, sure. Uh, GPL. Um, yeah, and tell me, uh, did you get in at the open? Uh, I got in at uh, about 91 cents. Ah, okay, it's trading at about 94. Hey, we're going to a break right now. Why don't you hold on? We'll take a look at GPL together. Great Panther Silver with Phil in Denver when we get back from this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, we're on the line with uh, Phil in uh, Denver, Colorado. And uh, Phil has entered a long trade, did that uh, this morning inside of Great Panther Silver, around 90 cents a trade at 94. Now, Phil, are you able to uh, see my screens on Tiger TV by any chance? Yes. Okay. So the first screen that we're looking at is just my, just kind of to step through this thing one at a time. This is our correlation screen and it allows us to correlate two different instruments. In this case here, we're taking a look at Great Panther Silver versus the uh, continuous contract for silver. And the bottom portion of the screen, when a bar is above zero, tells us that the, uh, that the two are directionally correlated either to the upside or the downside. Now, on this correlation chart, I can use a average period of time. Right now, it's set to 10. If I set this to 5 as an example, there's 5. Uh, if I set this to 20 days, which would be about a, a, a monthly chart out here, you can just see how well correlated uh, price movement uh, is. So we know that there's a directional correlation there. Why does that matter? Well, it's going to matter we go take a look at the next chart out here because the most important thing, Phil, that you and I can do, that any trader or investor can do, the most important skill that we need to acquire is the ability to be able to identify support and resistance. That is, that is the most important thing. And you and I have several tools that we can use. One of those tools is uh, our TAS market profiles. Those are basically hidden levels of support and resistance where there is mathematically buyers and sellers. And it just simply gives you and I uh, a competitive advantage. What we know about silver right now, in order for your trade to work out with a high degree of probability, because of the correlation, silver must close above resistance. Resistance in the daily silver contract is $14.40. says 14.395 on my screen out here. The actual high today is 14.375. So, so far, what you see is silver up at resistance. If you didn't back up the truck inside of GPL 
and you want to build a position in GPL, if silver's unable to break through 1439, it's very likely to pull back to 1413 to 1405. That would have been the more preferred place for you to have taken a trade in something like GPL versus when price is right up against resistance. Now, maybe, just maybe, price is going to break through it and you're going to be just fine. But what I'm suggesting is it's very possible you're actually going to see a little bit of heat here. I'm not saying to exit it. I'm just hoping that you didn't over position size yourself, you know, inside this trade uh, right now because of that correlation. Does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. For sure. So, so if it does pull back, I don't want you to kind of freak out there. I want you to expect it and anticipate it. Think of that Heinz 57 commercial anticipation, you know, <laughs> And because that's that's what you have to do as a trader. So right now, silver's right. not been able to take out resistance. If you can't bust it out, it's going to maybe try to bust them down. Silver has been trading sideways for two, four, six, seven for an entire uh, week and a half now, trading day wise. So that's what you're looking for. And again, I would say I would be in. I would consider adding to GPL or taking a new position inside GPL at between 1405 and 1413. The problem is, as much as you would like to do that, this is the futures contract. And you might see that price level hit at two in the morning. So you're not gonna be able to have that opportunity. So sometimes you can't really time your entry into an equity position based upon what the futures contract is doing because the futures contract has a different time frame horizon in which it operates, okay? Does that, does that kind of help you with regard to how we would take a look at that trade, that equity? It doesn't even matter to me what GPL is trading at right now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, okay. Hey, perfect. I, uh, gl thank glad you to have very helped. much, Steve. That's great analysis. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, and thanks for calling and call anytime. And best of luck with the great Panther Silver. Okay, so we took a look at the New York Stock Exchange. We take a look at that extraordinary or... Um, Non-ordinary, uh, declining tops in its advanced decline oscillator with price moving higher. Uh, but, you know, we are in an unusual uh, market type. You know, I said, I said to Phil, hey, one of the most important things for a trader and investor is to be able to identify support and resistance. That is, that is true. Uh, another important thing for you and I to also understand is what's the market style that we in? Volatile? Uh, you know, is it uh, bullish? Is it bearish? You know, what is the market style that we are in? If we take a look at what's going on inside the market today, you see the Dow is up seven tenths of a percent. So it is the leader out here. What is the Dow doing? It's very clear and very evident to you and I. How do what what do you mean, Steve? Well, first, let's start by taking a look at the same resistance lines that Phil and I did, but instead of for silver, let's look at it for the Dow Equity Futures contract. The Dow Equity Futures contract formed a new TAS market profile yesterday. Yesterday. That's right. The bottom of the box 26022 that was tested and rejected. And then price went ahead and closed over the top of the box. When you close over resistance, what does that tell you? A change in polarity would be one way to take a look at it. Old resistance, in this case here, 26.261 should become support. Well, what did the Dow Equity Futures contract do today, intraday? Came back, tested support, old resistance, 26.261. Boom, took off out of there. Now, I would show you the weekly profiles, but they're not going to be helpful to us because price is above resistance there, too. So what does that say to you and I? It says the Dow is going to move higher. There's no resistance in place as we speak right now. There's no logical place for sellers to go ahead and start attacking. Where would the logical place be? Well, it would be at its old swing point. We're trading at 26,441. 100 and uh, so 26,441. Another 100 points is 26,541. Uh, 540, and we add another 70. So you got about 170 points, 176 to be exact, from where we're trading right now before the Dow would actually test that swing point. Now, it doesn't mean because it gets up there, makes that 100% move a move, that that's it. Kaput, adios, you know, doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. Why? Well, the reason why, or the reason it could be why, is, let me do this. Let me see if I can find this chart here. I know I can find it. It's just I've got to stay focused to figure out what I named that chart, name that tune. Here we go. Here's the actual Dow chart. 
Now, what I want you to take a look at here is, do you like to break dance? You know, the old Michael Jackson break dance. Here's what I want you to really focus on, pay attention to. I want you to take a look at charts two through four, meaning panel number two, three, and four, the Dow and Euros, the Dow and Yen, and the Dow and Pounds. And what you're going to notice here, these are monthly charts that we're looking at, okay? And when you take a look at those monthly charts, take a look at the swing points. Those lines are clearly marked there. You can see that in the other major currencies, the Dow has busted through what, what quite frankly, would be equ the equating to the January highs out here. And what this tells you and I, and this is where it's so important to understand the market that we're in, because it's not a market style that you and I typically trade. And it may be like this for years to come out there. And you and I may find all kinds of technical reasons why the market should top. But guess what? The one thing that is going to trump market top signals or anything else is called the flow of cash. Just take a look at the flow of water in North Carolina. I don't care what kind of barricades you put up there. You get a deluge of water. It's going everywhere. The going everywhere is in the U.S. stock market, folks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN has just launched a Tiger Dollar sale for one weekend only. Through Tuesday, September 18th, you can get up to a 50% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service. TFNN has a new website launching in the coming weeks, and to celebrate, we're having a Tiger Dollar sale. For all the details and to get up to a 50% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase today, visit the front page of TFNN.com before this sale ends Tuesday. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, the, earlier in the day, uh, one of our denners, Maria, inside the Tiger's Den, I don't know if Maria is still there or not. 
um, was talking about how the 30-year Treasury had gotten below 140. And I had posted inside the Tiger's Den. Unfortunately, when other guys are doing the shows because I'm a contributor, if I post my chart, it overrides their their screen. It's not a very good thing to do. That's not cool. So I can't really post my charts until um, I'm actually doing the show out here. And what I at least was able to post in there was not so fast. Be careful. Uh, because uh, is she... I'm going to assume she was or somebody was saying, hey, time to, you know, maybe buy TBT, time to short the actual 30-year Treasury. And I was just kind of saying not so fast out here. And the reason is because just kind of like Phil and I talked about, you know, you start to buy things up towards resistance, it can be kind of dangerous. Doesn't mean you can't break through. We just looked at the Dow saying, hey, the Dow's going to go head up to its highs. We don't see any resistance out here. We don't know that it's going to stop, but we take a look at what's transpired over the course of time with regard to the Dow and other currencies, they're in full breakout mode. Those folks, traders of our Dow in those other currencies, they're not seeing a top. Not in their currency. That's all they care about. They could give a hoot, if I can use the word hoot, with regard to what you see on your screen. It's what's on their screen. And they see a breakout in three primary currencies out there. Hmm, something to think about. Back to the uh, back to the 30 year. If you take a look at this chart, by the way, which it shows the horizontal trading range boundary lines. Uh, those are the red uh, lines that you see on the screen. Not so worried about those right now as the mere fact that 3.255% was the high in June of 2015. Uh, there was a nice bearish candle that took place in July of 2015. What that really did was that established the benchmark of horizontal resistance. Yes, these horizontal trading range boundary lines can also act as support or resistance, but you and I can also use Japanese candlestick charting to truly be able to identify where there's other intermediate term, in this case here, it's been intermediate term since June of 2015. This is three years, folks. Now, if it busts through this, which it can, okay, then that tells us that the 30-year rate is going to head to 360. But would you really go short Treasury bonds right now with it being right up against resistance? The answer is no. Not a chance you wouldn't do that. You would actually consider the opposite side of that trade. Now, you might exit that trade pretty quickly if it doesn't work, but that's the side of the trade that you would be looking at. We don't have any, anything right now to suggest to you or I that this is not going to hold. Now, luckily for you and I, we have a set of tools, Stevie's Black Box tools, that really provide you and I with important information as to, uh, is this really where we could see a turn in bonds? Hmm. What do I mean? Well, if we take a look at one of the black box tools here, this is uh, showing us the, if we're going to see a turn, it's going to first happen on the short time frames, shorter time frames. Here we take a look at a 30 minute, a one hour, a two hour, and a five hour. You'll see these uh, changing back and forth right now. The euro, US dollar, and a one hour chart keeps uh, going back and forth between consolidating bull and bull over here. So I know it's up against a profile level, but that's not what I'm focused on. But just if you're looking on the screen and you see things changing, it's because this is live. This is it's taking its data. It's live stuff, which is very cool. Now, get to the point, Steve-O. We'll take a look at the 30-year line, the fixed income line here, 30-year December bond. Look at the 30-minute bottom confirmed. Look at the hour bottom confirmed. Look at the two-hour bottom signal. Just waiting for the five-hour to show up to give us some type of bottoming signal. What does that mean, bottom confirmed or bottom signal out here? What it means is the pattern that's been associated with every major, every bear market, that's preceded every bear market in the Dow for the last 130 years, same signal that we can use on intraday timeframes for tops and bottoms. That's what it means. It's the cool Stevie Rhodes Momentum Indicator Tool. Take a look at price inside of the 30-year on a two-hour. Two hours, one of those time frames that we looked at. We saw price moving lower. Doing less relative energy, and then what shows up? The cavalry. The cavalry shows up and creates a hammer candle. Now, the beauty there is, as Treasury bonds were touching the lows this morning, as rates were, in essence, touching that significant level of resistance, now maybe everybody was aware of that. That's why people said, okay, uh, time to uh, take my short off, maybe flip it to long, or whatever their thinking was. You know where the cavalry has, is on a 30-minute basis. 
You also have a slight, we have a bullish engulfing candle. Price isn't over Stevie's red line on a 30 minute basis. So you don't have a confirmation yet out here, but we do see signals. Look, a daily chart is going to override a five-hour chart, which is going to override a two-hour chart. Uh, you know, you know, you know the, the the pitch right here. But we may be getting close. What you and I are looking at, we may be getting close to a turn in bonds. And just look at bonds from a James Bonds standpoint. Don't start correlating bonds to the U.S. stock market and what the next move in the U.S. stock market is going to do. Don't do it. No. it you just don't want to do it. Now just stay with bonds. Just stay with inside the bonds out here. Now, what else did Treasury bonds do that are kind of interesting? I didn't catch Tom. I just heard his voice uh, as was just coming on, uh, getting on the air, and he was talking about bonds. But I don't know what he said. I would have liked to have heard what he said. But here's what he might have said. He might have said, hey, if you take a look at the 30-year, what it did was it tested and so far rejected the May 18th swing point. Yeah, that's the yellow line. That you see 139 and 24 30 seconds out there tested it so far has rejected it i'm going to get rid of this red line because that was an old level of support which failed miserably now failing miserably made sense because i've been short bonds and i said to subscribers we're still going to stay short even though price was down to that support level and the reason that we were going to stay short was because we couldn't see let me see if i can find it here oh man where is it uh, is it here? Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, it's right there. It's right in front of me. We were going to stay short because Treasury bonds in euros uh, and pounds had already broken through support out there. And so we could take a look at the global flow of cash and understand what was going on and saying, you know what, there ain't no buyers overseas. And if there's no buyers overseas, we're just coming into a support level in dollars. That pretty good chance we're going to see things bust to the downside. And so they have. And now they're at this next level out here. And so we just have to continue to watch the short-term time frame charts inside of the 30-year Treasury. I can take that two-hour chart. I can change it to a 30-minute time frame, uh, which I'll do. It's on my other screen out here. Um, let me change one thing on this before I put this over here. So that was 30 minutes. Let me change that. And then I don't have to explain what I did because it won't matter because you won't know what I did. But I did it so it clarified the chart. So here we take a look at a 30-minute time frame out here. You can see same type of pattern, Rhodes Moment Indicator, get the bullish reversal signal. We're trading inside the box. We're above Stevie's red line, but we haven't broken out above the top of the box out here. And that's the next key level for the 30-year Treasury before it can suggest that maybe we have bottomed. Do not be surprised if we have. We're getting the signals. We just don't really have the full confirmation that you and I need, and we'd like to see that on a five-hour time frame. Pretty cool, eh? You'd almost think I was from Canada. I was. I was in the city that is south of uh, Canada, Detroit. A lot of cities are south of Canada. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Hector uh, C. writes in and asked uh, if we could take a look at uh, New Age Beverages Corp, NBEV. And he's asking uh, the question, how high can this thing uh, go? Um, and uh, what they apparently the, in the news today at 1022 this morning is a New Age Beverage Corp set to debut its CBD product portfolio at the North American Convenience Show. And, um, you know, and so this this does look like the Wild West of uh, of Bitcoin, these uh, cannabis uh, type style drinks out there. I don't know. Hey, what do I know? I haven't tasted or tested it. But uh, this thing certainly has taken off topside. Um, to answer your question, where can this, how high can this go? Using the high metaphorically, I suppose, no, phys, you know, from a perspective of price out there, um, you'd have to say that this could go back in at least to its uh, swing point high from June of 2017, Hector, and that's uh, $7.20. My suggesting that you get on the bandwagon Nah, I, 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 I can't suggest that. Um, you know, it's been one heck of a week. Do, do markets end on wide-ranging bars like this? No, not typically. But look at the weekly chart here, Hector. And here's the reason why you wouldn't want to step into this now. It just kind of like seems like the theme of the day. Do you really want to buy something when it's trading right into possible resistance? My answer, no. Sell into resistance but and buy into support. Right. So in this case here, you can see that uh, NBEV is running right at 424. The actual high that we have today is 425. It's trading at 413 right now. So it's trading right into that resistance established in January, January 15, 2018, up at 424. If you're going to go ahead and take a flyer, we'll let this thing get beyond close above four and a quarter. It's only 11 cents more than where it's trading right now. But at least let it do that, and then maybe it'll go ahead and make a run for those highs out there of 720. You know, maybe this is just an earth-shattering change. It totally changes up the uh, company out there. I don't know. I mean, are these beverages regulated? I, you're not telling me I'm going to just simply go to the 7-Eleven right now and pick up a, a, a bottle of pot, am I? Is that? I, I don't know. 
I, I probably I'm not in tune with what's going on out here. Not that I don't have a few aches and pains, and maybe I ought to get more in tune, but I'm not in tune. I don't know. And plus, you know, Hector, you talk about lack of volume out here. Well, this thing's got it. Normal volume on this thing is about 380, 200,000 shares. Today, 57 million. I don't know. Let it at least close above resistance out there before you take any kind of action, especially, hey, what, you mean I'm not going to go have a nice bottle of Cab or a Merlot or, you know, a Super Tuscan? I'm going to switch to this? Eh, probably doesn't go good with a nice medium rare steak out there. All right. Let's take a look at Earl's question. Hey, Steve, FBC, let's go take a look at FBC out here, Football Corporation of America, Flagstar Bancorp, okay, um, made a 52-week low on September 17th. It's now up 3% from that low. Is it too soon to mean a low is in and it can continue up? So let's go take a look at that. Ticker symbol FBC out here. This is the daily time frame. And I'm going to say the answer is, yeah, it's too soon. Why is it too soon out here? You know, I'd say one of the reasons it's too soon, oops, if we take a look at the daily time frame for you is, uh, let's look at all the time frames because I, I reserve the right when I look at the weekly and monthly. Maybe I, I see something else. But right now on a daily basis, let's say that the low was a two days ago out here then price should be able to close above resistance, and that would be 32.14 if we just simply use our TAS market profiles, one that formed yesterday. So you need to see, Earl, a confirmation uh, with price closing above resistance out here, and then maybe, maybe, just maybe, then what you have in FBC is some type of uh, bottoming pattern. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it looks like you and I might have taken a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here, um, but uh, the weekly time frame candle it's not a bullish reversal signal. It's just a pause button as we speak right now. So we don't have the bullish reversal candle out here, a bullish harame, but that's not bullish enough for me to say, okay, the cavalry has arrived out here. And if I look at the monthly time frame chart, I can already tell you that's not going to show me anything. So, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, uh, that it's too soon to tell. But if price gets about 32.14, you may be on to something with ticker symbol FBC. That is the Flagstar Bank Corp out there. JR writes in, ditch your bank account. Oh, see, I should not have uh, taken a look at that message out there. I don't even know what the heck that is. I thought that was from, oh, John, John's message here. That's what I thought I was clicking on. Uh, John in Sarasota. Uh, hi, Steve. What kind of action for SQ? SQ do we see out here? That is square, the square one. And as we take a look at it, right now today, John, it is uh, breaking below its uh, the bottom of its TAS profile, so a level of support. Uh, the last time the price was down here was on September 5th. There were 18 million shares. Today, only 9 million shares. Lighter volume. Nonetheless, if this closes today below 84.45, I see this pulling back to about 70.43, the top of its weekly profile out there. Is there anything else that I see out here inside of Square? There's not. I've got my other charts running on my other system, but there's a delay going on there. And so that's not extremely helpful to you or I. I would also say on its chart, so what I can do, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to share it with you because the show you doesn't make sense. But uh, that is suggesting a pullback to 74.26. So 74.26 to 70.43 is what it looks like you're looking at uh, as far as a retracement inside of Square. That's with the caveat that price closes below 84.45 with or without volume. You're at 84.15. So thanks for writing in. I hope that helps you out. Uh, Lee B. writes in, says, can you give me your short-term thoughts on IWM? I'm talking one to two weeks. One to two weeks is short-term? Oh, my goodness. I will do my best out there. So if we're going to try to take a look at the IWM, the IWM for LB, uh, out here. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? Well, first, let's do this. IWM. Trading right now at about 169 and change out here. And so I'm going to give you my short-term view. And I'm I actually, for some reason, uh, my Ninja Trader chart is picking up uh, the uh, current uh, information. So that's a beautiful thing. And so we can see the price is moving higher, doing less relative energy out here. Uh, right now, you can see that Stevie's green line, that means the price oscillator is above zero. Nonetheless, 
what we see is it's acting as resistance. Right now, that's at 171.28. So Lee, and I can only give it to you right now, day by day, but here's what I would target. Here's what I would suggest. You've got a topping signal inside the Russell 2000. I'm looking at IWM. We'll go look at the futures contract. Stevie's green line is acting as resistance. It has for probably two weeks now. Price should target the Tom DeMarc setup trend line right around the 166 level. 166 is my downside target. The only way that's going to happen is you need to see it close below 168.79. That's the top of the weekly profile. That is support right now. Yeah, the daily shows us a topping signal. It means you pull back to support. Remember, Phil and I said the most important thing is to identify support and resistance. Support for the IWM on a weekly basis, 168.79. It's got to close below that. Great. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So if we recap uh, what we uh, determined during this uh, past hour, uh, the Dow trading up 201 points right now, 26,448. Dow is going to go ahead and has no resistance that you or I can see. There's Therefore, there's no reason for it to not go test. We don't know if it's a test or rejection. We do, don't know if it's going to blow through it. 26,1671. If we do see a close above that this week, today's Wednesday, so come Friday afternoon, you see it close above that. Then you know Stevie's call. But shoot, quite frankly, yeah, we'll, we'll do it for a weekly basis. 
as opposed to a daily basis. If we close above it, at the end of this week, my call is that these lows down here in April, April 2nd, 2018, that price is 23344 We will not see that price get tested for more than a decade. More than a decade. That's right, more than 10 years. Beyond 2028. This is 2018. More than a decade. Instead, what will take place is the Dow will have transitioned to just a whole new level of higher pricing. Not saying there's not retracements uh, or corrections of 10% or more. I'm not saying in the next decade there's not a bear market. Bear market meaning a 20% correction or more. Remember, you and I, the take look at 0.382 and 0.618 retracements, that's 23% or 62%, which are normal out here. Those will still be around. But what I am saying is the lows from April will not be seen again for at least a decade and probably 20 years, probably two decades out there. And so where everybody's looking for tops in the marketplace, there's no top to be seen inside of the U.S. stock market. Once the old Dow or young Dow closes above 26, 61671. Six, six, Put that on a piece of paper. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Pacific Thursday. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.